Ladies, gentlemen, welcome back to part 5 in the My Python Auto Rigging tutorials. Uh, today I want to do a couple of things. Um, I want to focus on fixing the IK handles uh, for the forearm twist that, we, that we've been working on. And I want to get started on adding and creating the controls to pretty much everything. Um, if you have time left, uh, we can start adding in the constraints like the parent or aim constraint that we need for the controls to function properly. Um, so I'm going to show my code what I've done because I've made some minor changes. Um, for example, I moved the legs in the IK um, creation script uh, down from the if statement because it doesn't need to be in that if statement because um, it has nothing to do with the forearm twist. So I moved it down and I've added the single chain solvers to my feet because um, I want them to have an IK solver mostly to prevent the joints from scaling because uh, for example the user can by accident move the joint then everything will break and I don't want that so this will uh, prevent that and also for the uh, inverse foot wall you will need to have the IK solvers in there in this case the single chain so that's all I've done so I've added this part of view, right? and I copy pasted this one that I have over here for the forearm twist. So it's all from last time, so we can create locators. We can create secondary locators. In this case, I'm going to make the forearm twist. And now when I add the joints in here, the orientation, and when I add the IK, you'll see that the IK handle here, right, is on the second, it's on the first joint in the forearm twist. Because um, it needs to be there, because if it's done on the wrist, the forearm will start bending, and we don't want that. So this is why it should be on the first forearm twist joint. In this case, it's called arm twist zero, right? So, um, so we need to move this to the actual wrist location, right? So we need to move it down to here. The problem is though that you can't use like D, for example. I mean, when you're if you're used to uh, rigging, then you know that with D, you can actually move a joint without breaking everything. In this case, though, if, if you move it, you'll just move the IK handle itself, right? You don't want that. It's can not break everything, as you can see, and it's broke. So, we don't want that. We just get rid of the joint real fast. So, we need to move the end effector of the joint itself, right? Um, if, if you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, on my channel you can find a, a series on rigging, a manual rigging in this case, which will go through the basics and why you should do this. Uh, but now it's just I want to focus on the scripting part of it. So we need to move the actual end effector of the IK handle down to the location of the wrists. So I first want to get the location of the wrists. So I'm going to make a lift that left wrist position, well, different way to say, and a right wrist position. Okay. So again, same as usual, nothing changed. Right? We just get the uh, H form. In this case, I want to use the base of LS and find my uh, wrist. And then I want to say, I want to query something, and I want to get the translation. And I want to have a more play space. In your space. Right, that's it. So I'm going, to, I'm going to copy paste this real fast and then change this to R. Okay, so this is the, uh, getting the actual position. Um, and now we need to get the end effector of the IK handles. So we're going to store it real fast. So left IK and right IK in this case. Um, and you can get the end effector by again calling the IK handle function. Uh, most functions in Maya and Python there is there are two versions of it so you can make one but you can also, you can also uh, get something from it right so by saying query is true. Uh, so we're going to do the same thing here so in this case I want to get the IK handles so in this case IK arm and if you're wondering why I've got the IKL arm, well, it's the same as up here, right? So we we'll just make sure that those names match. And that's all you need to do. So then the IKL arm, and then say query is true, right? So key is true. And then we want to get the end effector, or EE is true. 
So this way we will actually get the end effector or when it ends and store it in this case in the left IK. And then I'm going to save it in here. Paste this real fast and then I'm going to change this to on. Okay. So we now have the position of our wrist. We now have the end effectors of our IK handle. So now we can actually start moving it. So it's same thing as usual, it's based on move um, to the location that you want that you want to move to. In this case, it will be left wrist position zero. Again, XYZ. So you can paste it. This will be two, this will be one. And what do you want to move? Well, in this case, let's do a little bit more different. We're going to grab the left IK itself, right? But I don't want to move the IK effector itself. I want to move the pivot point of that. So I'm going to add plus here, and then I'm going to say dot uh, scale pivot, like so. And I want to move the left IK again plus rotate pivot, rotate pivot. Or I should say dot, maybe dot rotate pivot. Like this, right? So this will get the actual pivot point uh, and move it towards where it should be. So I'm going to paste this again. We also need to do it for the right uh, IK and then we get right position and then the right IK like this. Okay, so we move it and then we move the, uh, the pivot point of those objects instead of the object itself, right? Because that's actually important that we do that. So let's see it actually works out. So I'm going to create a joint, I'm going to set the orientation, I'm going to create the IK. Now I can see here, right? It's perfectly aligned where it should be. We can now actually start moving again. Perfect. Escape. Cool. Let's take the locators. So now we can actually start working on adding the controllers. Um, again, I'm going to make a new script for that. A new class because I want to keep things organized. So I'm going to make a new one. Sure, it's going to be. Python scripts, and then again, as usual, we're going to import the Maya.cmds and in this case, base. Okay, I'm going to start somewhere real fast, and I'm going to create a controller. Fine. Okay, so we're going to make a create control script, controllers, like this. But first, I just want to see how I want to show you how everything works. Um, it's actually not that difficult once you know about it, um, but it's a little bit of a trick, right? So I'm going to show you first how to make an arrow. Yes, it's it's a little real fast, and then you can say base dot curve, right? Curve. Like so by default, this will create an empty curve with no points in it. So when you actually create the points itself, you can do that by creating p, right? And then say is or equals. Then we need to do a bracket because the reason why this is because it's it's going to be a list, right? A list of points that we're gonna to add to the curve itself, and then every um, point will have an XYZ position. So for example, this will create two points, right? Enter and enter right now, we're both gonna fill it in. So we're gonna make in this case an empty position or empty point in this case. So let's make an arrow. Um, Let's do paint because it's fun. So we need to have a point here, and here maybe, and then here, here, beautiful arrow, <laughs> here and here. Also, I want to add a second point here, right? So the line is actually closed. Otherwise, if, if you don't do it, it will be a line from here, and then it will stop. This will be this will be empty, right? And don't want it. So okay. So now I can just fill in the uh, coordinates of it. So. Let's do that. So the first one will be somewhere around probably like uh, 1, 0, 0, right? 1 on X, 0 on Y, and 0 on Z. Since I'm going to make it flat, we're not going to run it, we're going to touch the Y and position at all. So then it will be 1, 0, and then 1, right? Because that will be the second one. So this one is 1, 0, 0, and then this one will be, of course, this is 1 up, 1, 1. Right, or maybe even two. Let's make it two. It's going to be really close. Now we do the same thing. So the next one will be this one over here. So let's pretend this is now a two. So this one over here will now be two, zero, two. Right? Because so we because we move two to the left. But imagine that there is a line here, 
and this is zero. So this this part of here, this is called the origin, right? This is zero. Then we're gonna just move one and two and three. Then you can just count, right? You can just count. That's exactly what we're gonna do. So it's gonna be two, zero, two. Okay. Then we get to the one in the middle. So this one over here. So x will be zero. So zero, zero, and maybe let's do four. Let's go and see what happens. Okay, and now we're gonna go back, right? So we're going to the core. We're going to this location over here. It's the same thing, but then just inverted, right? So the values are just inverted. They just did. So only on the x though. So we're gonna get minus two, zero, two. So this this one over here. For that inverted, so the x is just inverted. Then we're gonna do the same thing again. Minus one, zero, two. And then we're gonna get minus one zero zero and then of course i want to have one that closes down the entire loop over here so i'm going to add one here again so again i'm going to do one zero zero with this and that's it right so let's just check to see if it actually works real fast i'm going to execute this and we get absolutely nothing because i get an infinite syntax because i forgot to add the bracket there it is absolutely beautiful error right <laughs> Um, at least it's closed, but that's pretty much it. Um, the reason why is because by default, right, it has, uh, I think, three degrees, which means that it will actually try to round off the actual curvature. I don't want that, so I'm going to change this to make sure that I don't have any degrees at all in there. So the degree, in this case, would be one. So I don't want it to be smooth or rounded or anything. And then you get an actual error. Now, the question is, like, do we like it? Uh, maybe the one in the middle could be a little bit higher. So let's just check that real fast. But then we'll this over here. Let's, do, let's make this six, right? Again, let's execute this and then get a. That actually looks like a nice error. Of course, it's way too big. Of course, you could just change the values over here or you could just scale down the entire object and then uh, later on at some point you will feast it uh, on transformations. Works as well, right? So, error. Beautiful. Now you can even go even more hardcore on this as well, because you can also make a circle and then you can like scale down certain points of it. For example, when, when you want to make a star, let's make a star real fast. So let's just do it old school way for a second. You can add here like the amount of sections, let's do for example 12. This will means that we'll get 12 vertices, then you can grab them and maybe like scale them down and then you get like a I said star, I said it's the linear. Beautiful. I'm actually doing both. <laughs> that was not intentional, but that looks awesome. Actually. Beautiful control, right? So we're going to do the same thing here, but now we're going to do it in code though. So I'm going to make a basic circle. And after that, we're going to actually make the actual class itself. Um, so the first one for a circle is that the NR. Uh, normal where so in which direction is it pointing right so if it's on x for example you would say it's one zero zero or if you want to be flat on the ground in this case what I want to have I'm going to use zero one zero so that, so that just means that it's going to point up in space right okay then we're going to say c is zero 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 for now it's only important where it is um, I'm going to say radius that makes sense for everybody. One, and then I'm going to say degree again. I want it to be one, same as the uh, curvature that the hour that we made. And then you can say the amount of sections that you want. In this case, I'm going to go for 16. For example, you can have, even have like 100 if you want to, but for now, I just want to have 16. And then, of course, we're going to give it a name. Let's, let's call this uh, master control, for example. Master control. Make it, let's test it, see if it does any errors, and there is the mass control. This one over here. Okay, so they all work fine, but now I kind of want to scale them. Uh, like I want to scale certain points in my curve so I can create the actual star. And I'm going to do it by using a selection. So I'm going to make a selection, I'm going to say based off select. Uh, in this case, I don't want to use based off ls, right? Because I want to select the actual points or the curvature CV points of my object. 
So we're gonna select in this case. I'm gonna give this a name for a second. Control. Um, I want to I want to select my control vertices. So I'm gonna say control, or in this case, what's called what you named it up here, line five, and then not CV, and then one. So of course it's zero to sixteen or fifteen in this in this case. Um, so it's always we also count it zero, right? So I don't want to select the first one, but I want to select the second one. And then again, comma, and now I'm going to copy this a few times. This will be three, and then this will be five, seven, nine, eleven, thirteen, fifteen. 15. And even. Okay. Like so. Right, so this will select the actual control vertices of it. Let's just do it real fast. Let's execute this. Um, this will select them like we do right here, for example, and then you can move them down if you want to. So, I'm just going to leave this for a second, and then we can start scaling them down. So, Again, same thing as usual, you can say the base of scale, and then let's do like 0 0.7, 0 0.7, 0 0.7, 0 0.7. What do you want to scale? I want to scale my selection in this case, right? I don't want to, I don't want to scale the entire object, I just want to scale my selection. And then nothing happens. Beautiful. Oh, I fucked up. It's a little bit. I fucked something. Did I make, make a typo? I think I made a typo somewhere. Right, things actually based on the name of the object. Let's go to screen five for a second. There we go. Okay. See now you got a nice star. So this one is actually the name of the object and not the variable that we start actually makes sense. Okay, so now this is how you make stars well. For example, this would be nice for like the hip controller or wrist controller or whatever, right? Okay. Nice. So let's make the extra class. So we're gonna make a function. This is actually so okay. Mm -hmm. Let's I think I'm missing a oh, that might be from the So I'm gonna keep this for now. I'm gonna make a def and create controller. Let's do bullshit here like this. So I wanna include it in my auto record as well, so I'm gonna import the controller scripts. Controller of course. Same thing as usual, you can move, type, you want to make sure that you reload it in case you want to do something, in case you want to change the object, right? Okay, let's see if anything works and don't get any errors, okay? In here, I want to make a button, so I'm going to paste one of them, so find the cursor, there it is, Ooh. there it is. I'm gonna to go to controller and then I'm gonna copy paste this line of here, create controller. Beautiful. I'm gonna paste this in my actual function, so I'm gonna tap this. Okay. See if we don't get any errors, we don't get any errors. Delete this for a second. This should not execute, it does not. Press the shelf, see if XC. Probably change the name. Oops. Uh, let's do controls. Controls. Yeah. Right. And then create the controls for us. Um, you can of course make a separate window for it if you want to. Um, but I don't think that's super interesting for this. Um, it's up to you, of course, if you want to, but yeah, I don't want to because it's not really interesting. So we need a whole bunch of controls for this, right? Um, so we want to have, just going to do a mouse control over here, and then we want to have the pelvis, for example. Pelvis, and then the spines. We want the spines that we have, we want to do one for the wrist. Uh, we maybe want to do one as well for the uh, clavicle. What else do you want to have for the feet? Um, it's up to you. Uh, if you either want to have like a separate control for the uh, elbow for uh, and the knee as well, but it's up to you because I'm going to put them in my actual control itself. 
Um, but inside of this, up to you, right? It's your life, so okay. Um, let's do a mouse controller, right? Like, actually, I'm gonna use this one for this because I kind of like it. Big ass star, actually, I don't wanna. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Let's give this a name, of course. So, master controller. So, let's draw it out. Okay. Is this and this? Not quite pacing. Here, right? That's it for the mask tool. That's literally just it. Um, maybe you want to change this to like mask control or like master to it actually. Um, that's it. So for the pelvis, I want to do the same thing, but then I want to place it at the location of my pelvis. So in this case, I want to create, uh, let's create a circle. Let's just create a circle. With eight, all right. So I'm gonna copy paste this. There we go. Let's do eight, and let's call this control pelvis. And of course, you can move it. So we need to find the location of the object. So I'm going to say uh, based on move, and then I want to get the x form of the pelvis, and then I'm going to say based on s again. And we want to make sure that we get the proper naming, so I'm going to find my, it's just called Rick Pelvis, or Rick Root even. So I'm going to get it up to Rick Root. Let's make sure it's the excellent joint that we get. Touch joint. Um, then we want to query it. We want to get a translation. We want to make sure it's a world space. Uh, what do we want to move? I'm not sure if this is going to work though, but we'll find out. No, this is not going to work. Okay. Uh, let's do this real fast. So, uh, root position. This, and then, okay, so root position zero. Again, because you have to use with the uh, zero, one, two position for this. What do we want to move? We want to, uh, we want to control or move the uh, Control. There you go. So you get any errors? Hopefully not. Just let's run quick. There we go. Let's load this and then create tools. Once you know it didn't actually move anything. Wonder what this is. Pelvis mouse controller. Yeah, the error still there. So. Okay, so the didn't move. That's on actually. It's called with groups. Oh, awesome typing. Yeah, there it is. Oh, yeah. Actually, no, that's weird. So let's do some debugging. Uh, let's get this out of the actual um, object. To the other function. There's X so I can print it out. Weird. That is weird. Oh, it should get it actually. Am I being stupid? No, what? Then why didn't you move? It should be a one. Hmm. Interesting. See if I find an issue there, translation services. That is what. Let's put this one here, so I don't have to open the window every time. Still not in my position. Oh, it's a tough one actually. Uh, that's super weird. Oh, 
Oh, ah. I see the error. Stupid. So I have here <laughs> two. So it's, it's moving it on the wire on the zap position, which is, of course, not what we want. I, I apologize. I am stupid. Never mind. So, trawlers. Let's probably open the window again. Trolls. Yeah, there we go. Much better. Of course, it's way too big. So, we need to scale it down a little bit more, well, quite modestly. So, same thing as the other one scale. It's still 0 0.5. 0 0.5 and 0.5. What do, you, what do you want to scale on? Well, scale on the this control. Cool. So, let's actually. I'm gonna skip the common thing because it's just copy paste, right? The feature the same thing, just copy paste it. I wanna do the hands because that's actually more challenging than you probably realize. It took me a day to figure it out, and in the end, I'm like, yeah, I knew that. It's really, it's a trick once you know it. Like, oh, okay. So I'm gonna do the same thing, right? I wanna create a again control. I wanna create a um, star. Because I kind of like that, so I'm um, gonna change this to control. In this case, let's do first the L wrist. Okay, then I want to scale on everything. Let's um, also call this. No, wrist control. And uh, let's do a point either four. I don't know. I'm, I'm just guessing here. So four. Wrist control. Yeah. So we want to move it, right? That makes sense. And of course, we also want to make sure that it's actually um, rotated in the same angle as the joint, because that would be cool. That would be cool. That's that's why that's what we what, what we live for, right? Um, so first we need to get the position of the object, again, wrist uh, position, for example. Um, or maybe we could do it all, all at once, no. Okay, so we need to have two, two things, right? We need to get the position of the object and we need to get the um, rotation of the object. Rotation. Um, but in this case, on the surface of the position, because that's the easy one, so we can do x-form again, and then we can do the case of ls. And then I think it's a wrist l, rig l on wrist. Again, query is true, translation is true, and then rule space is true. Same thing, nothing really fascinating. Okay. But then you get to the cool part. Oh, it's fun. Um, we need to get the, um, since this is a joint, right? The, the, you can't get the, well, you can get the uh, X form, or you can use the X form, but that's going to be zero um, because the joint by default, when we look at the actual joint itself here, it has zero rotations, right? But when you, when you look for in the orientation of the joint, then you can find the actual angle of the joint or which, in which angle it's looking at, right? In this case, it's looking at a child. So this is the values that we are interested in. Interested in interested in holy shit um so we're going to do a little bit differently it's the same thing that we did before with the uh, ik handle as well so you have over here with the end effector we're going to do the same thing for a joint because a joint can also also be queried right so i'm going to say based on the joint so in this case we're not going to make one i just want it to be there i just want to have it uh, again based on ls same thing wrist then I say again, Q is true. Again, we're going to query the joint and now I'll get the orientation of the joint. But it always says for orientation. So you get the actual wrist orientation, joint orientation. It's perfect. Okay, so next step would be, of course, to move it. Um, it's a move, say, so thing four. Then again, I use the wrist position first. Zero. And then one this time. And don't fuck it up. And then what do you want to move? I want to move the position of the actual wrist controller. That one, right? Okay. Next step would be to rotate it. Now this is where it gets really, really, really weird. So based on rotate, um, well, let's just use the actual values first, right? So I'm going to grab the rotation value, 
zero and then one and then on two. And then we say which object do we want to rotate? In this case, I'm going to rotate my this one. This one. Okay. So let's see if I don't get any weird errors. I do not. Perfect. Let's delete these ones first for a second. Okay. Controls. There we go. So this is not correct, right? As you can assume. Right? This is just fucked up. This is fucked up. We don't want this. So we only want to, want to rotate this object on one angle. In this case, that would be, well, this is the new part. So we want to be zero. You want to have something like this, right? But this is not this is not aligned properly, as you can see, right? You can see there's a little bit of a angle in here, so it should actually be something a little bit more like, uh, let's also make this zero. Oh, let's make this zero as well. So only one rotator on the x-axis, like so, right? Um, and then we have a value of 46 in this case. So, this is not correct, so I'm going to change this. I'm going to make this zero. Again, we only want to, rot we only want to rotate on the z-axis, zero. And then I'm going to grab my x-rotation, and then it should work fine. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to explain a bit how it why and how it actually works. Oh, let's grab these ones first again. Oh, not that one, this one, this one. Controls. There you go. So now it's actually perfectly aligned, right? All, almost perfectly aligned. It's really, well, it's just a rounding thing. Okay. So, this is really weird, right? Um, so we're using the X rotation to rotate the controller on the Z axis. So, so we're using the X rotation of the joint to rotate an object on the Z axis to make it align. Which is really fucking weird. So I'm just gonna show you how it actually works. So when we it's gonna be a little bit slower, a little bit lower, less thick. When we rotate an object in Python, right? You can see it here in the corner as well. We first do the X and then the Y and then the Z, right? So we start here, we get the actual chain, so we get X and then we go to the Y and then we go to the Z. This is the order in which we rotate the object itself. Right? But here's the thing, here's the thing. Maya uh, does it the other way around? So you start with the Z, then Y, and then X. So even though it says that we're that we're always doing it on X Y Z axis, you're actually rotating on the Z Y X axis. Uh, it's a little, it's a bit of a mindfuck, um, but this is how Maya's um, rotation matrices actually function. So we actually do it the other way around, which is why we need to uh, put the X value. In our Z value, right? And I hope that makes sense. So this is how we do this in Python, right? And this is how Maya actually rotates objects. It's just that was what we M Maya. So it actually does it the other way around. And knowing this is actually really important for if you want to do any forms of complicated stuff with um, rotation in Maya. So it's other way around, right? Okay. So now I have the actual objects here. I'm just going to skip a few. Which you can do this rest of yourself. It's really not difficult. Um, next step would be to freeze the transformations, right? Because you can see here that everything still has an actual transformation. So we, we want to freeze them, right? It's actually important that you do freeze the, the, the transformations for all the objects. So how do you do that? Well, you would think there's something in there like a paste of the freeze transformations, but there's not. Um, the weird thing is, um, it's actually called uh, make identity, right? Don't, don't, I don't know why it's called like that. Okay, so what do you want to make identity? <laughs> we want to use controller, uh, then we want to make sure that we apply the actual settings, right? So apply, then we want to set the, uh, the transform on one, we want to set the rotation on one, and we want to set the scale on one. Go. So this is how you uh, freeze the, the transformations in Python, so I'm going to do the same thing here, and also for the mask control as well. There you go. Do this. Right. In this case, I just want to change the values. Uh, that's correct. So to this. Right. There you go. Let's delete them for a second. Like this, and then create it again. Can we close the window? Controllers. There you go. 
So now everything is nice and frozen as well. Exactly what you want to have. It's perfect. Okay. Um, of course, you also want to parent stuff. So, so you want to parent, you want to make sure that the pelvis is parented to the mouse controller, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But we've done it before. It's really not interesting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish making all the controllers. And then in the next video, we're going to add um, the constraints to the IK handles and everything else. And we're also going to do the four arm twist in Python. So uh, I hope to see you soon. And I hope you enjoy this video.